Howdy again. This is Tubal Cain, and uh, in the last five videos, I did a series on uh, this little oscillating engine, and quite a few of you responded with great interest and wanted to build one yourself, so uh, you need a drawing. Now, rather than make a drawing, uh, orthographic projection and all that, which I kind of dread doing, to be honest with you, I'm making a living blueprint. That is, I will give you all the dimensions that I will write down on the actual engine here. So, if you'll get a uh, paper and pencil ready, you can uh, make a sketch or just write dimensions down because some of these are not critical dimensions at all and you can certainly vary from them, but yet this gives you a point uh, with which to start building the engine and determining what materials you need. Now, if you remember from part one, uh, I actually built two engines. This one was off camera. It was just the prototype. But uh, the, the final one that I, uh, that I made was done with a casting. Now, you're not going to be able to make a casting, probably. So, you'll want to make it out of uh, bar stock. So, why don't you make the base and the pedestal like this one? And the dimensions for that are as follows. This is aluminum. Matter of fact, almost everything is aluminum or brass, except for the flywheel. And this is 3 8 thick, but it could be half inch. And it's two and a half wide by two and three fourths long. And again, those dimensions can vary, whatever you, you got or whatever looks proportional to you. I left out one dimension that was three eighths thick. I, I mentioned it, but I wrote it down there also. Now, for your upright, that's also three eighths thick aluminum and one inch wide. It will be fastened to the bottom with two screws of any size, but probably a 1024 uh, would be your best bet. And they could be countersunk like this, or counterboard, or uh, use uh, cap screws, or, or whatever you want. And the height here of the pedestal, or the main frame, whatever we want to call it, is uh, three and a half inches. Now I'm going to move to the other engine and take all the dimensions off of that. Remember, I can't even get this one apart because that was held on with Loctite. So in some ways you can paint yourself into a corner with Loctite. That's why on the other one I did use a set screw so I could take it apart. I switched to a fine point marker on the upright here, which will help show up just a little bit better. And I've got all kinds of dimensions here. So let's start with the fact here that uh, this hole should be uh, drilled three quarters up from the base. It'll be slightly different here, but it's still three quarters from the base. And of course there's a center line, so these two holes are on a center line. I did not bother to show that, but it's one inch wide, so the center line is half inch in from the edge. And then uh, the pivot point here is an eighth inch hole that's one and five eighths up from the main shaft. So that hole is one eighth inch all the way through. This hole is seven thirty seconds all the way through such that it can hold a piece of brass tubing or something else that you make up that's three sixteenths ID by seven thirty seconds OD. Hence the reason for drilling that 7.30 seconds. And this hole, remember it was drilled eighth inch from that side, but we counterbored it about halfway through for the spring, so that would be 13.64 counterbored. Halfway through is 3.16 deep. Don't drill that all the way through that side, just halfway. And these holes here, remember, will be located later on. There will be no dimensions given for the location of those holes. That's the most complex thing to do. Go back and look at the uh, uh, other videos as to how I located those with transfer punches. Those holes, again, 330 seconds all the way through. And then I used tubing here, eighth inch tubing, so I drilled eighth inch holes about halfway through. And again, don't drill those holes eighth inch all the way through or you'll spoil the work and have to start over and get quite discouraged. 
So that appears to be all the dimensions that you need to know for that part. I guess we can call this a living blueprint. This is the flywheel. One and a half diameter steel. And I reamed it three sixteenths. And it is half inch thick. Or it could even be thicker or thinner for that matter. But you want some weight to that. And there is a set screw hole here, all the way from the outside to the center there. And I use an 8 32nd set screw. And uh, you go ahead and look that up on the chart to see what size that is. But also, I think I showed you in the video how to counter bore that rather than threading at the full length and uh, breaking off your tap. So look up the tap drill size for 8 32nd, 832 rather. And this, this business here of the recess, that's optional. You don't need to do that at all. It can look like this on both sides. If not, just eyeball that so that it gives you some satisfaction in appearance. Now let's take a look at the main shaft here and the crank. This is 3 16 steel, 2 inches long altogether, approximately. And needless to say, it's a 3 16 hole reamed in the aluminum. It's a 3 quarter inch uh, stroke in this engine, which is a 3 8 throw. So from the center of the shaft to the center of the pin there is 3 8 of an inch, and that's a 3 30 seconds hole for the pin. And the pin overall length, it would be a little less than a half inch. And the diameter of this crank pin, one inch. Thickness, oh, three sixteenths. Needless to say, the shaft is on the center, because you would center drill this uh, on the lathe, so your, your uh, shaft is right in the center of the disc. That's aluminum steel shaft, brass pin, but you can use virtually any material you have on hand. It just is not critical at all. But that should be all the dimensions that you need for this little assembly. Remember, I Loctited these. You can use threads if you want also. For this little assembly, I was forced to make an actual little sketch. And this is not necessarily to scale. But as you can see here, the overall length of the assembly is 1 and 7 eighths. The piston itself is 3 eighths thick, and that's half inch diameter. The rod, the little brass rod, is 3 30 seconds diameter. And uh, piston is 3 eighths thick, did I say that? And the little piece down on the end here, that was kind of hard to draw. There isn't much room there, but that's also brass. And it was uh, 3 16 diameter brass, and that entire length of the piece is uh, 3 8 Remember that was held in there with Loctite. The little cross hole there for the pin is 1 8 inch from the edge, and it's a 3 30 seconds diameter hole. So I think I got all the dimensions that you need there. And remember to be sure and make this piston to fit the bore so that you have a nice fit within a half a thousandth, let's say. Although, again, it'll be very forgiving even if you're off. Now for the cylinder. The stock is three-quarter wide by one inch, and it's one and a half inches long. And this hole, the main cylinder hole, is uh, five-eighths from this surface, or it would be three-eighths from the other side if you do the math, and centered this way. So this is, uh, if it's three-quarters thick, it's uh, it would be the center of the hole would be three-eighths from the side here where my finger is. I didn't have room to draw that on there. So I think I'm going to smear these dimensions here as I uh, rotate this in my hand. I'm forced to revert back to a, a sketch for the, this view of the cylinder. 
And by the way, somebody asked me what brand this uh, automatic center punch was, and it's, it's a Fowler. I've had it for many, many years. I don't know if they still make them. But anyway, the bore is 500 thousandths, and uh, the dotted lines here represent the bore. And that bore, remember, it's a blind hole, and it's one and three-eighths uh, total. Total depth. And if you go all the way through, you'll have to make a head for that. And that's one alternative that you can uh, think about. Now, these two holes are on a center line, and since this is three-quarters wide, the center line is uh, three-eighths from the edge. I didn't put that dimension down. But the bottom hole here with the brass... Uh, uh, rod in it is 9 sixteenths up from the bottom and the other hole is 5 eighths up from that and uh, this is not to scale as you can see now the top hole is uh, I believe I'm going to stop for just a second and I'll pencil in the dimensions for those holes as well okay the top hole is 3 30 seconds through Remember, it went all the way through, and later on I plugged it, and the purpose of that was so that we could transfer the uh, uh, ports. And uh, the bottom hole is eighth inch in diameter, and that's if you're going to Loctite it in like I did. Now, if you're going to thread the other end of this rod, I would suggest that uh, you look at the chart and find out what the tap drill size is for 540. Remember 5 is the same as 1 8 inch. That's why you ought to go with that rather than a number 4. Because a 4 will be an odd size. And the overall length of this uh, little brass uh, rod is as follows. And I'm going to measure it right now. And that's not too critical either, but it's a uh, yeah, it's about one and a half inch total, and the a thread is 540. That's a number 5, 40 threads per inch. That way, a number 5 nut is easily going to fit on it. Again, that's kind of a hard to find size. You may have to make your own nut. The hardware store will only have 440s, probably. And that is it, model makers. I think I've given you all the dimensions that you need. You can sketch them or you can keep coming back to the video here and uh, double checking what size they are. And also you can ask questions uh, among each other in the uh, comments section. Maybe somebody can help you with that. Remember, I just can't answer all the questions. There's too many of them. And uh, some are difficult to answer as well, you know, that I can't answer with two words and it just takes me too long. And as a matter of fact, sometimes I can't even find the comments anymore because of the new Google Plus. So there are some that are not coming through and I don't understand that, but I already am a member of Google Plus so that you'd think I would get them all, but they don't come into the inbox like they used to in the olden days. So that's it. I hope this was helpful for those of you out there that are going to make one and uh, appreciate your watching uh, all of these uh, videos. And I do have plans on making another one of these uh, in the near future that will be double acting. Remember, this is a single acting steam engine because of the uh, open bottom end of the cylinder. And the next one will have a closed bottom and it will be more difficult to build. But this is an ideal one for a beginning model makers or those of you that are going to work with a grandson or a son or a, or a friend or whatever and uh, get you into model making. So it's a simple one. And this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.